My dress up darling has come out of nowhere to absolutely blow up this season and now I can't stop seeing this anime girl all over my fucking timeline. Avatars, fan art, hentai. So why can't I stop seeing this anime girl wherever I fucking go? It's a simple question with an even simpler answer. This is a man's anime, a real man's anime. But most of all, it's amazing, like really fucking amazing. My dress up darling manages to take all of the basic things you could hope to find in a romance anime and just manages to do it so much better. Bunny girl, Nagatoro, Horimiya, Pancreas, Quince, Brent, and now my dress up all center around this idea of taking a sheltered loner with no social skills on the verge of becoming a school shooter and magically gift them with this season's very best of best girls. Who just happens to enter their life is rave hope by some sort of divine intervention. Kinda like a ginger flip or Kelly. It's something that resonates with a lot of fucking people and I'm just the same. I can't stay away from these fucking series. This unfortunately means that these series make a lot of fucking money. Companies like money. Suffice to say that this is a market that is oversaturated with stories, characters, humor and events that can all feel just as indistinguishable as the next. Let's see. Random introduction. MC proving himself as a reliable dude. The girl turns bright red when asked about the MC. Falling out. Falling back in. And a romantic climax that may or may not have a firework or bonfire in the background. Oh fuck, thank god that's over. Oh shit, season two! Oh! My dress up is guilty of a lot of this. But man, if it just does the same as the above, how can it actually stand out from this new romance anime that already stand out? Well, it could either do some etchy or lewd things with some minors, which is really fucked up with the amount of writers that are catching cases right now. Or you can just do what my dress up darling does and just brilliantly deliver this story that just about anyone can really love. The story. On the surface, my dress up darling can definitely come off as a standard shy boy meets loud girl scenario with a cosplay expansion pack. But the story will ever so subtly dabble with these real and heart hitting themes like social isolation, past traumas, burnout, and the fear of potentially losing something that's become very, very important to you. All of which are piled onto the main boy within the first four episodes of the fucking series. And done in such a way where even I can actually follow along and easily see all of these different things unfolding as they happen. Which means it's a really good fucking storyteller. The boy. Exploring his family's Hina doll workshop at a young age, awakening to Gojo's inner passion. And a really weird fetish to awaken <laughs> somewhere else. Nevertheless, this passion of his slowly becomes an obsession, and Gojo proceeds to spend all of his time alone in his room with these dolls, crafting in isolation, honing his skills, but ultimately cutting himself off from being able to properly socialize with anyone his own age. Constantly feeling out of touch, uninterested and afraid of revealing his interest to anyone due to some past traumas that he fucking bumped into as a child. Thus having him contemplate how it'd be better if he wasn't there at all. All. This curtain blocks him from view for just a split second. So even the slowest of us can see that he's looking for a way out. Existing like this, barely living on the fringes of society in the school or colleges that you spend so much of your time in, it's fucking depressing and fucking sucks. You feel bad for him yet at the same time, you don't because he clearly states that he put himself in this situation because it's what his heart wants to follow. It's real, it's expressive, the anime drops all of this emotional damage on you in the first few fucking minutes. So here's the dog playing in the snow just to cheer you up. The girl. 90% of the time, the girl always get introduced to the boy in the most obvious of fucking ways. Oh, she was like a hit of espresso with skin like cocaine. This bitch truly needed some moisturizer for her flaky fucking face. Or they'll find out that they have to live together or beside each other. You get the fucking point. Or main girl, Marion here is so fucking keyed up that she doesn't do any of that. Instead, she nigh on dolphin dives into her boy's life at one of his lowest possible moments and immediately starts jacking off his arm, signifying that the shackles that once bound his existence are about to fall away to his newfound freedom. Not really, it just looked really lewd and good and I wanted to put it in. But why does it look so fucking good? Oh, it's made by Cloverworks. Starting in the Frank's Bunny Girl Senpai, this studio takes the topic of best girl very fucking serious and has done an outstanding job adapting this entire series. Perfectly depicting Marion as this character that's the direct opposite of Gojo. Outgoing, popular, energetic, but just like Gojo, Marion also has a dream. That of course being cosplay, which she also more or less does alone. Unfortunately, she's fucking dreadful at making any of the outfits, which is actually kind of important. Yeah, you don't just buy everything off Amazon ready to fucking go. I just learned this in the last week. Anyway, the whole entire relationship that they have with each other sounds atypical of the very fucking genre that they exist in. <coughs> because it fucking is. But it's the expression and the execution of their emotions and the interactions that they have with each other that really sets us apart from other series like Nagatoro, Quince, or Rent. My Dress Up Darling makes everything feel that bit more adult, more grown up, more mature. In the second episode, Gosho is literally trembling at the fact that he has to take Marion's measurements alone in his room. Bare skin 60 FPS booby jiggle. Of course would have been a rom-com as a fuck ton of tropes but then it stops and it goes that one layer deeper and actually has him think like a normal fucking person and consider how she feels in that same situation where he then realizes that she's completely placed out of her trust in him. So for him to be thinking anyway indecently whatsoever makes him the creep. And as horny as it all gets it's also pure, it's innocent, it's how these characters should fucking act in these situations. Nobody wants to see characters from bright red every time they fucking speak. Fuck that shit. Actually, sometimes it's good. No, we want some of that relatable shit. You get to see the main boy 
out Hoyle in anguish as he realizes that he's been half-assing his entire life. The main boy literally busts a fucking nut. If that alone is not enough to sell you on this series, maybe the next bit will. Cosplay. Just like Biggie and Martin Luther, Marion also has a dream and that is to be really really good at cosplay. And this anime takes you for a fucking ride. It's not just something that's stuck on to separate this series from the rest, but just like Blue Periods takes you through the entire process behind it. And the entire ordeal of recreating these characters in real life to such a fucking point, I fucking learned something. You see, I used to be of the belief that you could just go online and buy these costumes pre-fucking made. A belief that was instilled in me having seen thousands of OnlyFans tots posting up pics in the same Gwen Stacy outfits, the same Lola Bunny outfits to try and trap my hard earned cash. I mean, I was kind of right. But I was in fact very fucking wrong. Any of the real cosplayers online on Twitter spent hours designing, resourcing materials, sculpting, crafting, posing. It is a massively skilled and talented craft. The level of intricacy on some of these is absolutely astounding. Details, blueprints, prop design, $300 artificial titties, guides on how to recreate Denji's head from Chainsaw Man. I mean, just look at this thing, it's fucking insane. Am I going to make one? Fuck no. I don't have the skills or the resources to do any of that. I can only sit back in awe as I watch the people whose true passion lies in cosplay do all of that right before me. And I just have to appreciate what this anime has actually shown me. You see, this anime highlights all of this and drives it home early. Marion can't make shit, but Gosho's got all of the skills. The knowledge of what colors to use to make their design stand out the most. What materials a certain character would be best suited for. This story is meticulously crafted as is the very industry that it shines a light on. And if that's not enough to get you to check out this series, then fuck me, I really don't know what is. And all of this is represented by art and animation that is just as carefully crafted. This is the sort of series that Cloverworks is best known for. It is also one of those series that I can't let people know that I'm fucking watching. They somehow make some of the most minor details in this series appear to be fucking lewd. I live in constant fear of the moment my door opens just as the scene switches to a 60 frame per second booby jiggle. A slow motion panty shot or a lewd measuring session. Hey, the house is empty. I can finally watch this and be- Hey, what the fuck? I thought nobody was home. Shh. Ah, oh, check the fucking door, check the fucking door. I just what the fucking nothing there. Daddy. Eh? Ah. Hi, my name is Ben. Like this shit, comment something down below, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.